Today on Rappler. Ano ho tayo na loob ko sa inyo? Hindi ho ba na pinagsimbihan kayo ng maganda? Ano ba yung bahay Yung bahay po namin inutang po sa banko at nabayaran po yan. The word war between Senator Alan Cayetano and Senate President Enrile turns ugly and personal. The Foreign Affairs Department says the Philippines' decision to take China to court is a move against an intruder. And the boss of Aman Futures, a pyramid scam company, is arrested in Malaysia. Hello, I'm Natasha Gutierrez sitting in for Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. The word war between Senator Alan Peter Cayetano and Senate President Juan Ponce Enrile turns ugly when the topic shifts from Senate funds to personal issues. Cayetano says Enrile is against him because of the Senate President's ties to former President Gloria Arroyo. Ayim Karaig reports. May I respond to Mr. President? Sir President, para hindi po tayo... I have the floor. I mean, Sir President... The issue is supposed to be Senate money, but Senators go into a whole lot more. Senate Minority Leader Alan Peter Cayetano delivers a privileged speech on Wednesday on the controversy on Senate President Juan Ponce Enrile's selective fund giving. Cayetano says he wants to focus on the use of taxpayers' money, an issue he believes Enrile did not address in his offer to resign last Monday. Yet the senator could not help but get personal. He explains Enrile has been against him for a long time because the Senate president is allied with former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo and her husband Mike. It's not just national politics that's involved. Cayetano also responds to media attacks from Enrile's chief of staff, lawyer Gigi Reyes. He says Reyes is the best friend of the wife of retired Justice Dante Tinga. Tinga is the bitter rival of his wife, the gig mayor Lani Cayetano, in the 2010 polls. Sa nakakakilala sa amin, hindi kami nakukuha sa pera. Hindi kami hipokrito, and we are people who know how to respect other people. But we are also people who know how to stand up for our rights. The minority leader reiterates his call for an independent private firm to audit the Senate funds. But it's not the budget and really responds to. The Senate president immediately lashes back on an entirely different topic. Tungkol sa yung yung ama. Eh, ang masasabi ko lang, eh nandito po. Ang hanggang ngayon, hindi niya, hindi niya nababayaran na utang niya na ginastos niya sa opisina namin na itinayo ko para ba, meron siya pag, pagkain sa pamilya niya. 37 million po. Cayetano quickly responds to defend his father, saying the late Senator Renato Cayetano was loyal to Enrile when they worked together in a law firm. But the exchange gets uglier. And di ba? Anong utang di, na loob ko sa inyo? Hindi ho ba na pinagsimbihan kayo ng maganda? Ano ba yung bahay ninyo? Yung bahay po namin inutang po sa bangko at nabayaran po yan. Yung mga kahoy, sa tayo po po ba? answer the question of the budget. I will not, I will not go down to the gutter. Because uh, this gentleman is You already lying. did, Mr. President. You already went to the gutter. Your chief of staff has already gone to the gutter. This is irrelevant to our discussions here, and you're bringing up things where a person who's already dead cannot answer. There is a pending motion to uh, just suspend the uh, session for a minute. Their fellow senators call for a suspension of session as Enrile's blood pressure rises. A calmer Enrile later apologizes, but says he stands by his decision not to give additional funds to his critics for a reason he will not disclose. From the cash to the wood. Senators sling mud and many other issues as the fund controversy drags on. Enrile says he's open to a probe, but with all the issues coming out, it remains to be seen how and if the controversy will be addressed at all. Ayu Makraig, Rappler. And our social media post of the day is about this story. Alana Lilium leaves this comment on Rappler's Facebook account. This is good. Check and balance. This is better than all of them ganging up. At least the people now know what goes on in the Senate and how our tax money is being abused. The ordinary Juan de la Cruz, who is overburdened by tax, has the right to know where his money goes. 
Senator Antonio Trillanes says Senate President Juan Ponce Enrile must be ousted or he will use Senate money to fund the opposition's election campaign. Trillanes says if you have such a Senate president with tyrannical tendencies and the country sees how the funds are disbursed, they will see how his resources will be used for the campaign period. Enrile holds more than half a billion pesos as Senate president. Trillanes is reacting to Enrile's decision not to give additional funds to his critics last December. But the Commission on Audit says Enrile has discretion over the use of Senate savings. Trillanes says he will do what he can to remove Enrile. On Monday, Enrile offered to quit his post, a motion 11 senators rejected. Trillanes dismisses Enrile's resignation as drama and a shallow victory. The Foreign Affairs Department says the decision to take China to court over maritime disputes is the government's action against an intruder. The department says if someone forces himself into your house and tries to unlawfully take away what belongs to you, should you not take action against the intruder? On Tuesday, the government says it will ask an arbitration panel under the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea to rule on China's claims. China uses their 9-dash line map to claim the South China Sea, including areas disputed by neighboring countries. In a statement, the Chinese embassy insists China has indisputable sovereignty over the islands in the South China Sea. It adds the disputes should be settled through negotiations. On Tuesday, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon calls for an amicable settlement to the dispute between China and other Asian nations. China, the Philippines, Brunei, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Taiwan all have overlapping claims to islands in the South China Sea or West Philippine Sea. A witness in the alleged shootout in Quezon tells investigators the police at the checkpoint were not the first to fire, but the men in the car. On Tuesday, Rolando Boncayo Vico Jr. tells the National Bureau of Investigation he was 20 to 25 meters away from the checkpoint when he saw gunfire from a black Montero vehicle. The men in the vehicle allegedly fired at policemen after being ordered to stop at a checkpoint. Vico says the police and the soldiers fired back in defense. His testimony contradicts the statements of three witnesses who say the checkpoint sign was removed. Vico says he saw the sign when the shooting happened. The Justice Department and the NBI presented the witnesses during a reenactment of the incident on January 17. The military clears the soldiers involved in the incident. 23 policemen face investigation. Malaysian intelligence agents arrest on Wednesday Emmanuel Amalillo in Kota Kinabalu, Malaysia. Amalillo is the man behind a pyramid scam that victimized thousands. The arrest ends a three-month manhunt. Amelia started Aman Futures Group, a securities firm that duped 10,000 Filipinos, mostly from Visayas and Mindanao, into giving them investments by offering a double-your-money scheme. Justice Secretary Laila de Lima is coordinating with Malaysian authorities for Amelia's deportation. Two more suspects in the killing on Tuesday of Maconacon Isabella Mayor Erlinda Domingo are arrested. Quezon City Police say the two were arrested during follow-up operations based on information given by the first arrested suspect, Christian Flores Pajenado. The other two suspects are Michael Domingo and Mary Grace Abduhadi. They were captured in Commonwealth Quezon City. Domingo was leaving Park Villa Apartel when she was shot. She was reportedly scheduled to return to Isabella. Her bodyguard was also injured during the incident. This is not the first time a Makonakon mayor was killed. In 2009, Mayor Francisco Talosig was shot by an unidentified male gunman. Hindi <laughs> natin alam kung two isolated events ito or magkakonekta ito, but this is a small town in a remote area of Isabela on the coast facing the Pacific. Uh, in a span of three years, uh, two mayors have been shot. So, uh, kaya maring uh, 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 nire-remind uh, si RD at si, uh, si uh, police chief at uh, pati na rin ang kabuhan ng uh, PNP na alamin natin ang kabuhan nito because this might the stage is set for Google to take on the Philippines as a new Southeast Asian territory. Google officially launches the Google Philippines office on Wednesday, making Manila the site of the company's fifth Southeast Asia office. Narcisa Reyes, formerly Google's head of sales for the Philippines, will serve as country manager for the office. The managing director of Google in Southeast Asia says they are in the Philippines for the long term. He mentions adapting the company's services for the country in relation to less reliable internet connections. Let's now look at Rappler's wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. 
At number three, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's efforts to boost exports and end two decades of deflation result in investor confidence. In Bloomberg's global poll of investors, analysts, and traders, 54% say they're optimistic about the effects of Abe's policies on Japan's investment climate. The figure is up from the 21% asked two months ago about predecessor Yoshihiko Noda. Abe is Japan's seventh prime minister since 2007. At number six, the Library of Congress wants to house not just books and historic documents, but also the 170 billion posts on Twitter since 2006. Collecting the 140-character tweets is in keeping with the library's goal of collecting the story of America and getting collections that will have research value. The Library of Congress is assembling tweets sent by Americans each day, reflects a small in the belief that each tweet reflects a small but important part of the national narrative. There are about half a billion tweets sent each day in October 2012. At number 9, the Taliban says Britain's Prince Harry has a mental problem for comparing shooting insurgents in Afghanistan to playing video games. The Taliban spokesman says there are 49 countries with their powerful military failing in the fight against the Mujahideen. Harry says he killed Taliban insurgents during a 20-week posting flying missions in an Apache attack helicopter. He was in charge of the weapon systems, which he describes as a joy. And at number 10, only four days after the launch of Temple Run 2, the action video game is downloaded 20 million times and becomes the third highest grossing application in the iTunes App Store. While the game is free, Temple Run 2 players can buy coins for upgrade and gems which can be used to continue the game if the player dies. In the game, players take on the role of an explorer attempting to steal an idol from a temple while chased by demonic monkeys. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click on how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that got the most clicks. Let's check out today's mood navigator. An initial look at the Mood Navigator today shows different colors. The biggest circle right in the center is a story on Congressman Aaron Tanyada asking the Maccabayan Coalition why they, withdrew, why they withdrew their support for the Freedom of Information Bill. This has a whopping 97% of people feeling angry. A circle of a different color on the left. This story is about the Philippines taking the China dispute to the UN Tribunal. This has 85% of people feeling happy, 5% of people feeling amused, and another 5% of people feeling afraid. And lastly, a story here on the right, also red. This is actually a story from today, our top story of the newscast. Enrile Cayetano and Ugly Word War. This has 57% of readers feeling angry and 33% of people feeling annoyed. All of these stories, of course, contribute to the mood of the day. Today, most people are angry. That's Rappler's newscast for today, Wednesday, January 23, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. And tell us how you feel on our mood meter. Help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Natasha Gutierrez. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.